want to talk this morning about the wisdom of the peacemaker. The wisdom of the peacemaker. Because in this war, we have three types of persons, three kinds of people. The first one is the, pre the peace breakers. Peace breakers. The second one is the peace fakers. Peace fakers. And the third one is the peacemaker. Okay? So once again, peace breakers, peace fakers, and peacemakers. What kind of person are you? What kind of person do you consider you are? Let's gonna explain about these three kind of person this morning. The peace breakers are those who go out of their way to break down relationships, cause troubles and division. They are people who always confront with other people destroying the relationship. They disagree, they, they, they confront, they uh, do everything in order to destroy the, 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 the arguments of others. But their motivations are self. Their motivations are manipulated and they are self-seeking. Self so we can, in any circumstances, also be peace breakers uh, when we try to justify ourselves. And when we, when we are involved in any arguments that justify ourselves and know because we want to build a relationship, then we can become a peace breaker. Just what the Bible said in James chapter 3, verse 2. If you look at verse 2, it says, We all stum stumble in many ways. If anyone is never full in what he said, he's a perfect man able to keep his whole body in check. So everybody can once in a while be a peace breaker. And why? Because we don't control our mouth. We don't control what we say. Sometimes we just speak without thinking. So that's why I say this semester, change your soul, then change your words. But if you speak without thinking, then you are breaking the peace. Breaking the peace means breaking the harmony in living in a good relationship with one another. Then the second one is the peace fakers. The peace fakers are those who prefer peace instead of the truth. The peace fakers, they see peace as a simply the absence of any kind of arguments or discord. They avoid any kind of conflict, confrontation, and unrest. In doing this, uh, they set it up for false peace instead to have basis of real issues. So sometimes we try to avoid confrontation in order to keep the peace in the relationship. But this trying to avoid the truth is not making peace, but is giving an opportunity that those who are together with us, they once again will love, we live without peace. What was the memory verse that we, we did uh, yesterday? We say, for the sake of my friends and my brothers, peace be with you. So when we are looking for peace for our brothers, our friends, it's not that we are avoiding the issue. It's that we are confronting them because we love them. We must tell the truth. Not to break the relationship, but to keep the relationship alive as we really love them. Then, once again, trying to avoid the issues doesn't make real peace. It's just making us only peace fakers. So, the third one is to be, is, is the person who is a peacemaker. So, peacemakers are the very person who made difference between the peace fakers and the peace breakers. Why? Because the difference are in to guard their tones, to guard their words, to think what they have to say, and to not avoid the issues that need to be confronted, but they give their opinions in all time that they see that it's necessary to break the status quo in order to go and, per, and, and pursue the truth of everything. Telling the truth instead of telling lies. Telling the truth instead to keep quiet. Now, 
Here in Korea, and I'd say this maybe with disrespectful way, maybe I would be disrespectful if I say this, but in Korea I see many people, in church especially, that they don't try to say anything in order to don't break the status quo of the peaceful atmosphere in church. They try to don't say anything in order to keep the peaceful atmosphere between people in church, but that creates hypocrisy in church. We know there are issues that we need to talk, and we just don't talk because we don't want to put our image in risk, because the person who starts to talk, that we consider a peace breaker instead of peacemaker. Because the moment that one person breaks the silence, then another person will have also the opportunity or, or the, 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 the space to speak to. But we must do this wisely, as James said today in the scripture. No, as the word said, no in the wisdom that this world have, but in the words of God. So always when we speak, we must speak in God's behalf, in Jesus' name. When we speak representing Jesus, then that probably sharp confrontation can bear the, group, the good fruit of peace and the good fruit of harmony in building the relationship, not because we are avoiding the issue, but because we are confronting the issue and we are making the good relationship with one another. Of course, this sometimes takes time. It's not just one day uh, conference that we're gonna resolve all the problems about the, the discrepancies that we have in church or in, in school or every situation in our life. It takes time. But as much as people see our sincere heart, our love for doing the right thing, they will accept our confrontation. They will accept our counseling. They will accept our relationship. And then we, at the end, will we have a good relationship and we become each other peacemakers. Peacemakers, they put in risk their life. We have the example of Jesus Christ. Because all peacemakers will be, sooner or later, be crucified. Everyone who wants to be a peacemaker, sooner or later, will be crucified. Jesus, he came to this world to show the peace of the world. He himself was named the Prince of Peace. But when he came, when he came to this world, he started to confront those who tell lies, those who were peace fakers, and they crucified him. They didn't accept Jesus' truth because Jesus is the truth. He is the way and he is the life. But everybody who wants to follow Jesus, they will put in risk their static quo of the atmosphere. They break the silence of those who are doing bad and confronting them with the truth. And they will be also misunderstood and they will be misrespected and misrepresented in this world. But remember what the Bible said. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. If Jesus put in, in risk his life for become a peacemaker, why should we avoid that responsibility? Why when you see here in the school that someone is fighting with another, you just keep quiet or just keep watching without saying anything? Jesus became the intermediate between God and, and men and he put his life as a platform of sacrifice. Why we try to avoid when we see two people confronting each other instead to be an intermediate to become a peacemaker? What we should do in order to practice peacemaking makership in our life. First, change your thoughts. Decide to become a peacemaker. Second, change your words. Probably you have to use your, your tongue wisely. Change your behavior. Humble yourself and say, perhaps, I'm sorry when it's necessary. Or saying, I'm telling this with my love, with the love of God, not because I hate you, 
not because I don't agree with you, but because I want you your best. Or going out and see who is the offender and who is the offended. And put in risk sometimes the rejection that you will have if you become a peacemaker. Think about the risk of being misunderstood and misrepresented and the risk to appear wrong or foolish. Because those who want to be peacemaker, they will be mocked by the others. Hey, look at him. He wants to try to make this school a peaceful school. You probably will be isolated if you try to do the right thing. You will call foolish. But remember, they do the first thing. They, they do first with Jesus. And he was mocked. He was called foolish. And he was crucified. We as Christians, as the light of this world, we shouldn't avoid the responsibility to be peacemakers. Even when we sometimes become peacemakers, peace fakers or peace breakers, our ultimate goal is to become a peacemaker. So let's ask God for his spirit, for his power to do what Jesus did in his work. Let's pray.